back here again at the Platform Nigeria 2019, May 1st. I'm here with Sarah Lacey, who is the founder of Pando Online, which is the premier destination for tech-related information. Um, so I'm just going to ask her a few questions. And So Sarah, you've been, this is what, how many times have you been to Nigeria? This is my third. Oh, it's your third time. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure in that time you've come across a lot of like entrepreneurs, especially in the tech space. Mm -hmm. What has been your, uh, what's your opinion about the tech um, techpreneurs that you meet in Nigeria? Well, I think the talent is unmistakably here. Okay. I mean, I think my very first trip, um, I, was, I was shocked by some of the people that I met who were, you know, building companies that maybe weren't on the radar of people in Silicon Valley but when you talk to them and you hear about their idea and you hear about the approach they're taking I mean they may not have had the advantage that some entrepreneurs have in terms of access to capital and access to schools like Stanford and networks in Silicon Valley mm -hmm. but they absolutely have every bit of drive and intelligence and ability and it's um, you know this is a nation of doers this is a nation of people who aren't gonna sit back and wait for someone to give them permission. They're going to take it and build. And that's what great entrepreneurs do all over the world. So at the end of your speech, you spoke about um, capital, venture capitalism, especially when it comes to African techpreneurs or entrepreneurs in general. Mm -hmm. You sort of alluded to what you thought some of the issues were, which is sometimes not being plugged into the right networks. Mm -hmm. right? But over time, like in the last two years, there's been an increase in um, venture capital money flowing into Africa, especially from the West, which mm -hmm. is where, what do you think, do you think it's just a thing of the West, a Western cap venture capitalists now being more aware? What do you think changed that narrative? I think they started seeing they were losing opportunities. I mean, you know, one of the big themes I tried to talk about in my speech was as much as venture capitalists and people in Silicon Valley want to talk about they're driven by data, they're really driven by the patterns that have made them money in the past. Definitely. And it's kind of crazy when you think about that these people's job is to invest in new things that haven't existed before. Yeah. And they're looking for it to fit some pattern in the past. And I think that they, you know, look, people have lots of different opinions of mm -hmm. a company like Rocket Internet, and I have a lot of different opinions about them <laughs> as well. Um, but you look at a company like Rocket was really one of the, and then Naspers and companies like that, they were really the pioneering companies who went into these markets first, first and believed yeah. in these markets and started funding them. And I think it was only once Western Capital saw that capital from other markets was going to have money those in. spoils mm -hmm. that they started looking at it. But I would think, I think still, you know, as a function of the opportunity in emerging markets, the biggest Silicon Valley based VCs are still really focused on what's coming out of Silicon Valley. I think the surprising thing is not that that money flow has started to shift. I think it's that as a proportion of capital, it's still pretty small relative to the opportunity. So what can the en entrepreneurs on this end do? Like other than, you know, they don't have the networks, other than right. having these great ideas ideas, what platforms can we build, you know, what can we do to get these things out as a nation, as institutions, and individually? Well, I think it's important to support local businesses. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is one big lesson that Uber experienced in China. You know, Chinese citizens tend to want to support Chinese businesses, and certainly the Chinese government wants to support Chinese businesses. And so, just because you're the big American brand doesn't mean people want to use you. I see something different in a lot of emerging markets where there's this idea that somehow there's something glitzy or better or more aspirational about the American brand and they don't support the local companies. Yeah. I think supporting the local companies, I mean, look, if you don't have consumers, you don't have a business. You know, that that is where the rubber meets the road. And I think when you're talking about things like transportation, mm. you know, the reason Uber has not succeeded in, in most other markets, it's put billions of dollars into going into, is because things work differently in other markets, markets yeah. than they work in the United States. Yeah. And I think they didn't understand that. And I think, you know, the, the locals did it better. So I think finding, you know, leveraging the things that you understand about your market that Western giants won't, mm -hmm. I think as an everyday consumer, supporting those local businesses first. Um, and I think, you know, also, it's all about psychology. Like the hardest thing as an entrepreneur is to manage your psychology. Definitely, because yeah. you're gonna fail about, you know, 
probably 30% of the time, the best entrepreneur is gonna fail. So that means you're kind of like the equivalent of a C-suit student in school. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta be able to shake those failures off, but also learn from them and keep going. And I think it's hard when you're in a market like Nigeria, where you don't have as many people, you know, believing in the entrepreneurs here from the West. They, you've gotta believe in yourself, and you've gotta surround yourself with the people who believe in you. Yeah. Because a lot of the world is trying to send you a signal that, you know, the best company won't come out of here and you've got to prove them wrong. You've got to use that as fuel to prove them wrong. All right, thank you so much, Sarah Lisi. So you heard it from her. Believe in yourself and surround yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> the platform is powered by Covenant Christian Center.